Hello everybody, greetings and salutations. Today we're going to be installing Ubuntu Linux on this 2012 13-inch MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro has been lying around my room for ages. I've done basically everything with it. You might have seen another video I upgraded a few components of it, but today we're going to be installing Linux on this thing. So let's get into that. So once we've got our laptop plugged into the charger, which I always recommend, first thing I'm going to do is plug in our USB drive that we've already installed a version of Linux on. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we open up the boot options. We're going to do that by as soon as we press the power button, we're going to press the Alt or Option key, and that will bring up this menu. And there we go, it's loaded now. Now it does sometimes take a few seconds to load up the USB part, so maybe have a coffee like I did. Or sometimes you have to unplug the USB and plug it back in while this screen's on. This should work. Let's... Okay, so there we go, the USB drive is now connected up properly so we can see it on the menu. We're going to click that now and we should jump straight into the Linux installation. There we go, and there we go, we can see our like Grub boot screen. We're going to select the top option, install Ubuntu. And then we're going to sit here on this loading screen for absolutely ages. Alright, so we had to skip some of that just because it was taking so long. Uh, unfortunately, we're on another, another screen now that just also takes absolutely ages and keeps glitching out the graphics, but it will eventually load, so uh, just be patient. There is quite a lot of loading while doing this. I think we're just going to skip straight to the action, straight to where something's happening. Okay, so here we are. We've got the language selection. I'm going to choose English for this installation. I don't need any of the accessibility options, but they're there if you do. We'll skip that. Uh, select your keyboard layout. Now, this computer actually is a really weird one because it has a check keyboard. So we're just going to go and select uh, that keyboard, which is going to be hidden in here somewhere. I'm not quite sure. I don't have any other computers with this keyboard. There we go. Check. There we go, that's exactly what we're looking for. Now you can actually test out your keyboard. If you go down here, you can type any of the unusual special characters on your keyboard. You can see to make sure you've got the right one. I definitely have the right one here, so let's click Next. Okay, we're not going to connect to the internet this time. We're going to install Ubuntu. We don't just want to try it off USB. We're going to install it. We're going to choose the interactive installation. And we're going to choose the extended selection of apps. You can choose the default selection if you just want a really basic installation, but we're going to, we want all the extra apps, so we're going to choose extended. Uh, we're going to install recommended proprietary software. This is useful for your graphics drivers and your Wi-Fi drivers, especially important on this MacBook Pro because there's some really weird Wi-Fi cards and things like that in MacBooks. So we want definitely want that option ticked on. We're going to click next. The next step is we're going to choose how we want to install Ubuntu. Now you can either install it alongside your current operating system, you can erase the disk and then completely reinstall uh, a clean version of Ubuntu, or you can do some more unusual stuff. We're going to choose a completely clean installation on this one. The old OS is from a different computer uh, that I pulled the SSD out of, so we want nothing to do with it anymore. We can completely wipe it. Alright, so here's the creative bit. We're going to create an account. We're going to name our computer. I'm going to be really generic. I'm just going to call my account user and I'm just going to call my computer computer. This is also where we're going to input our password. Depending on what you're going to use your computer for, we'll tell you how secure you want your password to be. This computer is just going to be in my office. It's not really going to have anything private on it. So I'm going to use a really short password, just a four letter code. All right, so we're going to select our region. I'm going to choose London because that's the area closest to me and that's in my time zone. I click next. And now we're just going to review our options, make sure we're doing everything right before the installation. This is the last time really to change any of those options. I'm happy with those, so let's click install. And now we've got another loading screen. Now this one takes absolutely ages, so go and have something to eat, go and have a cup of coffee because this one's going to be a while. Alright, so we're now done. We've done with that loading and we've finally, Ubuntu is installed. We've got this screen. This means everything's worked correctly and we're ready to use Ubuntu now. So we just need to 
click restart now it's going to tell us to remove the USB drive we're just going to pull that out and then the computer will automatically restart and we should have a nice clean version of Ubuntu installed And here we go, at long last we have got our Ubuntu login screen, we're going to click our username, we're going to type our password and it's going to take us straight to the Ubuntu desktop. You may remember during the installation we didn't connect to the internet and we didn't download any proprietary drivers then. As a result of that this desktop's going to look a little bit messed up, that's fine, that's not a problem, it's just a graphics driver issue. So the first thing we're going to do now this MacBook has had Ubuntu installed is we're going to go straight to the updates and driver installer and we're going to make sure we've got the appropriate drivers installed and we're going to make sure we've got the latest updates. Now it should automatically find the drivers that we need. The two very important ones are going to be our Wi-Fi driver and our graphics driver. Ubuntu is very clever so if we go to the software updater we should automatically be able to install all the drivers that we need. You may notice in the left hand side I've plugged in a network cable because the Wi-Fi drivers do not work automatically. We're going to have to download those but it should do it all automatically. So if we go, as soon as we open the software updater we can see this comes up, we start downloading them immediately. Now it should just do this all automatically. At some point we're going to have to restart but when we restart everything should be absolutely fine. Hopefully the autofocus on the camera also is fine. Sorry about that folks, not sure why it's gone all blurry here, but I think you can just about make out what you need to see. Thankfully the graphics card's so messed up, you're not missing too much. Now if we open up this little menu here, what we can see is all the various updates we can download. There seems to be absolutely hundreds of them here, and this is because of course this is the first time this version of Ubuntu has ever connected to the software update center. This should include all the latest security updates, it should most importantly for us contain our Wi-Fi drivers and our graphics drivers which should sort out all this graphics issue we've got and also mean we can connect to the Wi-Fi so we don't have to use the wired network anymore. It's going to ask for our password and then it should automatically install them and it should automatically restart the computer and everything should all be fine when it comes back on. There we go, this looks a lot better doesn't it? So we've got our loaded version of Ubuntu now with the graphics drivers working fine. If we go up here as well what we can see is we are still on the wired network because I've not unplugged it yet. But if we go down to the software and update center we should be able to see all the various things that have been installed and we can see that our proprietary Wi-Fi driver is installed so this means that the Wi-Fi should just work and if we go up to the menu here there we go we can see all the other Wi-Fi networks that means that our Wi-Fi card is connected and are working with Ubuntu. Now we've got the Wi-Fi working that means we can go to a web browser and we can go to a completely random YouTube video we can test to make sure everything's working. Getting the Wi-Fi working on this is the most important thing for me because most of these laptops that are slightly out of date the main thing that they're good for is running a web browser and working as little netbooks. Uh, old MacBook Pros are absolutely ideal for browsing the internet with and just using it as a kind of portable way to, to get online. So there we go that's Ubuntu completely installed. Now everything from this point on is down to you so you can install whatever Linux programs you wish to install. I hope to make some more videos on what kind of programs you can install and, and things like that. Uh, but thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you liked what you saw today make sure to go down to the comments below and, and let me know what you enjoyed. Click that like button, click subscribe, click the bell icon, do all those good things. Uh, thank you very much. Um, watch another video from mine. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for watching and how do I stop the recording I don't know we're gonna keep going and let's end the video as always with some sort of video of something bizarre uh, today I think it's gonna be back to that cooking footage yes thank you again everyone goodbye